Hey, what's happening, guys? You all know what this circuit is, right? Well, half of it anyway. You usually see this attached to a 555 timer, and that gives you the old CD4017 LED chaser. Well, I thought it'd be fun to make this circuit for the kids and the STEM program using just the 4017 and no 555 timer and tell the kids, and here's what I think will be the fun part, you're the clock. So for every time the kids depress the, the advance button, the CD4017 is going to advance its outputs and will sequentially light those LEDs. So I think that's pretty cool. I think, you know, if I was a kid of that age, that's something that would interest me and kind of, you know, keep me interested in electronics. And how exactly is this happening? Why is it that I can press a button and different things happen on this chip? And that opens up an avenue of discussion for the instructors. Let's take a look at the CD4017 data sheet. So here we are looking at the uh, Texas Instruments data sheet for, for CD4017B and 4022. 4022 is what the, that's the eight, uh, the eight counter, yeah, octal instead of the decade. So if we take a look here and see if there's anything particularly uh, yeah. interesting import here. Yeah, okay. So we have a clock pin, a reset pin, and a clock inhibit signal. Those are our three important ones. I mean, everything's important, but those are the three that we really need to keep track of. So if we roll on down here, there should be an example. Yeah, not in this one, huh? All right, I'm probably going too fast and I missed it, but that's okay. We come down here to this page, you can get an idea of the logic in here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so here we have our inputs, and here we have our outputs. It says all inputs are protected by CMOS Protection Network. And if you look at the CMOS Protection Network, you have what kind of looks like a rectifier with a resistor in between them interesting okay so here we have our clock input and for our clock input to even accept any inputs well then our clock exhibit needs to be clock exhibit boy clock inhibit needs to not be on so this is a what type of logic or can only be one of them then we have our reset, which also needs to be low. If our reset is high, you can see it flips the resets on all of these flip-flops. So that's our reset pin. Sometimes you can get away with not connecting it, leaving it floating, but you really shouldn't. You need to pull that down so that those resets don't go active. So now when our clock pin comes in and it passes the first test, when we then we go up here to the CDs of these latches, which we're going to turn on sequentially each one. And that's pretty cool. You can see the way they're wired here. This one clock comes directly off the logic gate. This one, it comes off of this gate here, which goes over here. You can see they're all, it's, it's beautiful just the way this is done. If you just follow the sequential outputs, you'll see how they're all connected. And what you get here is your clock signal, which gives you this progression of time for the 4017 and what you can do with this I'm getting too far into this this is just for the kids but anyway what you can do this you can use this as a frequency divider uh, all sorts of stuff anyway let's go back to our circuit come on if you take a look here you can see my design of the circuit board it's pretty simple we have our power coming in here it goes to power the uh, CD417 on pin 16. It also goes to the switch here. Now, you're going to notice something here. This switch is going over here and flipping pin 12. Pin 12 is a carryover pin. It is not the clock pin. I made a mistake there. 
you can see I had it corrected here. Yep, right there. But it's not correct in this picture. Just know that this goes to pin uh, 14, not pin 12, or you're going to have problems. Anyway, like I said, it's corrected. <laughs> so then we have our sequential outputs. You can see if we can hit the right ones here. Should be able to see where they go. So there's our VCC. There's our ground. You can see the ground is connected at two points. In this case, it was on a pin 13 there and pin 8. That's a trace number 1, which goes to number 1. However it goes. I'm not sure I have the numbering right. But you get the idea. So anyway, the kids are going to be able to sit here and press the button and advance these. <laughs> There's going to be one other problem. They're going to go real fast. <laughs> Let's take a look at the, uh, the board I designed. So here's the board design. I was really hoping to be able to keep to my 50 by 30 board size, but you can see here I had to add a little bit onto the edge. And I didn't want to make it wider than normal. So I ended up sticking two resistors over here. I wanted them all here. We got our chip in the middle. There's our switch, Toronto logo, uh, my Happy Bear logo. Flip this thing around on the back. Come on. I don't know why my computer all of a sudden started slowing down doing these 3D renders. It never did before. Anyway, you see a little bit of instruction here. See the ground plane. And our sponsor, PCB Way. When it's time to order my boards, I go directly to PCB Way. All you have to do is come over here, click on Quick Order PCB, and add your Gerber file. In this case, we're working on the 4017. It is that particular Gerber file. It'll give you a rendering of it most of the time. Sometimes that doesn't work, but if it doesn't work, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It'll still work. They just having trouble rendering it here. Come down here, select the number of pieces you want. We're just getting five. How many layers this is a two layer board? What do you want it made out of? Again, again, thickness, track spacing. I would recommend leaving these as they are unless you know exactly what you're doing. My boards are red with the white silk screen. No edge connectors. You need to click this little box here. Just means if they're making your board on a substrate with other guys that have paid for uh, something like the gold, the Enig, then you're going to get some free gold. And who doesn't want free gold? Thanks, PCB Way. That's all you got to do. If you want to pay a little extra, they'll not put the production number on the board. It makes it a little harder for them to track, but if you're willing to pay for it, they're willing to do it. They are full service. Then all you have to do is come over here, choose your shipping. For me, I'm choosing um, it's a DHL, and it is four days shipping from the time it leaves. So, boom, get it back in less than a week. There are lower cost methods if that's what you want. All right, so here's your first look at the boards. I think they look pretty good. There's the back. There's my uh, slight correction and or modification. I don't know why I use the yellow LEDs. I don't know that I will stick with them. So we'll plug it into 9 volts. And then we just let it rip. I think the kids will like something like that. What do you guys think? So there's another board for the STEM program, the CD4017 Chaser board. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring the video, and a big thanks to you guys for watching. Wouldn't be here without the both of you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.